Hey friends, it's Gloria and welcome back to another video. If you can already tell by the title, this is going to be a little free library vlog adventure. So this past weekend, my husband and I went up to the Port Angeles area, which is the very tippy top of the state of Washington on the West Coast. And we were visiting some family up there. There's this little town called Port Townsend and it has a cute little street of downtown shops and businesses and restaurants. It has beautiful old Victorian homes and this tiny little small town has over 25 little free libraries by looking at the little free library app so i knew that i wanted to stop by so on our way home we made a little detour and stopped by i wasn't even able to visit all of the 25 in the time that we had i got to 15 of them and that is what this vlog is so you'll see some b-roll of me rummaging through these little free libraries and seeing what's there and then at the end i will show you my not so very small haul that i got from these little free libraries so stay tuned for that <music> one was by far my favorite obviously so stinking cute but let's dive into some treasures that i found so i separated this into three piles i have a pile of 10 books that i was genuinely excited to find i am interested in reading them excited to add them to my collection they sound really good i also have a dvd and a puzzle then i have 10 books that i have either maybe heard of the author or have heard of a title or the book just kind of looked maybe interesting and those are definitely teetering on whether i should keep them or not you know i don't really have any strong desire to read them but i might try a chapter and if they're not speaking to me i can just put them back in a little free library and then i have a pile of six books that i could not resist for some reason but i really don't think i'm going to read them so i really got them and i'll probably just put them in another little free library all that to say i did have a huge box of books that i swapped all of these books out for so i did feel like a little book fairy you know sprinkling books everywhere and moving them around so with that let's start with a pile of stuff that i'm actually excited that i found starting with a puzzle at the end i found a puzzle hometown collection mega puzzles is kind of like it's a weird color palette but there's some green and some florals and some quilting and like a little park do i have time to do puzzles these days not really but i found a puzzle um also found a dvd of the chosen season one this is a biblical tv series that a lot of people are raving about and love you know think passion of the christ but like a tv mini series and better i think is what i've heard just better production well made um i believe there's three or four seasons now anyways found this my husband and i've been meaning to watch a show the only problem is we don't have a dvd player so i don't know when we're gonna get to this but i found it then i found this little sweet book book nerd by holly mcguire this is like a little coffee table picture book meme book kind of thing i've seen this in a lot of stores a lot of like little gift shops bookstores like the gift section for book lovers that kind of thing and it is so stinking cute very like relatable 
to the book nerd. A couple classics. I found Weathering Heights by Emily Bronte. This is not a cute cover. Like this girl looks absolutely frightened. I also don't think I'm going to like Weathering Heights, but I had a really ugly copy and I gave that away. This isn't the cutest copy, but I like the short paperback. Like to read this physically feels very comfortable. So one day I'll read this. I'm feeling like fall vibes from this gothic kind of creepy, sad, depressing classic is what I've heard. I also picked up The Women of Brewster Place by Gloria Naylor. Gloria Naylor, I heard of this author from Reading with Mo. I believe this author is very comparable to like Toni Morrison. You know, she's up there with the black women authors, but I feel like no one really talks about her in the booktube community. A few miscellaneous finds, Words on Fire by Jennifer A. Nielsen. This is a middle grade historical fiction author. I've been still meaning to try, but I've heard really good things. People kind of compare her to Ruta Sepetis. This is set in Lithuania or about a girl who's Lithuanian and then sent to the Gulag or Siberian camp probably with her parents as well. This is now a second book by this author that I own that I want to try, so hopefully we'll squeeze her in before the year's up. Next, I found Washington Black by Isai Adukin. This is also historical fiction. It is about a slave in Barbados who is chosen to be a manservant of a very eccentric explorer man who is a naturalist and an adventurer, and they go on this journey together. I think they travel around and maybe it's about friendship. Let me know if you read this one. I picked up Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold. I believe I watched the movie years and years and years ago. Cannot really tell you anything about it, but I feel like this book is one of those modern classics that even though it was published in 2002, it still pops up. I always see this book in thrift stores and Goodwills, and I would love to read the book. I think most people like it. I'm not sure. I think it has to do about a girl who's murdered and her kind of ghost haunts her family to try to get them to uncover the mystery of behind what happened to her. Maybe like her dad or something. I'm not sure. I feel like that's kind of what it is and I'm not really going to dive into the synopsis, but I feel like I should try to read this one. Some nonfiction books that are in this first pile of ones I'm excited about. I picked up in Cold Blood by Truman Capote. This is one of the first like narrative nonfiction true crime classics written in the 60s. This book is on many must read lists if you like to read nonfiction books, which I do like to read nonfiction. I do like to read true crime now and again. So I was happy to find this. I mean, it's very water damaged and kind of gross, but I was happy to find it because I do want to read it. This next one I had not heard of, but I did read The Inside Flap and it sounds really interesting. Jesus Land by Julia Shears. This is about a girl that grew up in an extremely religious uh, family and then is sent with like her half brother to some sort of religious reform school in the Dominican Republic. And I love me a good religious culty book. So excited to try this one. Next, I found Born for Love, Why Empathy is Essential and Endangered by Maya Shalovitz. This is all about empathy and why we we have empathy as people, why we feel empathy towards each other and our ability to love and empathize with one another. This is definitely the kind of nonfiction that my husband and I would read before bed. Just a couple chapters here and there, learn something new. We're currently in the middle of all of the parenting and birth books and all of that kind of stuff. So we'll set this aside for a later time, but this does sound really interesting. Speaking of parenting books, there's always so many in little free libraries and I never really noticed them before, but obviously now that I'm in this place being pregnant, expecting my first child, I'm like, wow, they're everywhere. And of course people put them in little free libraries after they're done having kids because they don't really need that book as a resource anymore, which is great for me because I keep finding them. I picked up What to Expect the First Year. To be fair, What to Expect When You're Expecting, I have, have this book, I'm not loving it. Like it is not my favorite pregnancy book that I'm reading, but this is basically an encyclopedia of probably everything you need to know. So I will definitely be using this, perusing through it, and seeing what I learned from it. This next one was actually recommended by one of you guys, and that is Healthy Sleep Habits, Happy Child. I believe this is about sleep training, trying to get your kid to sleep, which we really want to try to do. So we will definitely be reading this one. Also very thick, a little daunting, but hopefully full of really good information. All right, my next stack of books, a stack of nine that again, I don't really know how I feel about them. Like I'm not so eager to put these on my shelves, but they interest me somewhat. So please let me know, especially with these, if I should save any of them and definitely read them. We were just talking about nonfiction. So I picked up Half the Sky, Turning Oppression into Opportunity for Women Worldwide. The only reason I picked this one up is because I distinctly remember that this was on my want to read Goodreads for several years. And I purged my want to read list occasionally on Goodreads and I removed it not that long ago. But this book is almost like a piece of journalism telling different stories of women who have been oppressed around the world and their experiences and maybe how they overcame that or what 
is still required and needed for people to help these different women out in different situations it still sounds really interesting probably one that i would try an audiobook of but yeah i'm curious i picked up solely because the cover was very beautiful but it's burns for every day of the year part one january to march by pauline mckay this is a collection of poetry from robert burns and again it is divided into a daily read of a poem from january to march past that timeline will i ever pick this up no idea i don't really even know who robert burns is but this cover is beautiful i like poetry now again i might peruse through this and and if it's a no-go and a bit of a dud then i will just put it in a little free library for someone else to find i found a stack of historical fiction again i don't really know too much about the warsaw orphan by kelly rimmer i believe this just received mediocre praises but let me know if you've read it a uh, world war ii historical fiction i don't really know if i want to read it but if it's really well done and if someone's like yeah that was a great one i might be convinced the virgin affair by nick dybeck this book is kind of the epitome of what i don't love to read about which is affairs and i think this is like the heart of the story but it's set during world war one about a woman whose husband is is missing and a soldier decides to help her out and while they are searching for her husband they end up falling in love and then her husband is found in some you know convalescence hospital somewhere so she has to deal with that i believe that's a story totally does not sound like my kind of book but for whatever reason i still just in my car. <laughs> Next, The Jewel of St. Petersburg by Kate Furnival. I am a sucker for any book that has anything to do with Russia or Ukraine or the Soviet Union and this is set in 1910 in Russia. I had not heard of it before but couldn't help myself. This one looks really cheesy, but who knows? The Girl in the Painting by T. Cooper. This is probably not the usual historical fiction that I would pick up, but the only reason that I did is because it is set in Australia in 1906, which is not a place that I read about very often or a time period that I read about very often. So that's why I picked it up. I also think that Thomas Nelson is a Christian publisher. So this is probably like Christian historical fiction, which I also have not read very much of, except that, you know, there's like nothing scandalous in here kind of thing the last three are quite miscellaneous i picked up eva luna by isabel allende this is an author that i really want to try i have long petal of the sea one of her books this is a cool little paperback a little creepy and i have not heard of this book before i could not tell you what it's about but i am familiar with the author enough for me to snag this one and we'll see if it sticks around i picked up this present darkness by frank e peretti i believe another christian author i think i read some of his middle grade books when i was young i know i've seen this book talk about on Chantel from Chantel Breathe All Day and Lovely Days with the Holly channels. Both of those people have talked about this book and I think liking it. I believe it's a series. I couldn't tell you what else it's about. I think it's supernatural, which is not what I usually read about. Again, if you're familiar with this book, please let me know some details because I just, I just don't know. I don't know if it's the book for me. And I picked up, in not the greatest condition, uh, Emerald Fairy Tales. This is just like a book of beautiful little old fairy tales with some illustrations. I might just peruse through this one. I'm not sure if I'll keep it around because it's not, again, the greatest kind of condition that's fallen apart a bit. And lastly, to end with six books that I truly believe I will not pick up unless one of you guys really shouts at me in the comments and is like, you should read it because it's good. But let me give you my reasons why I probably won't. The first one being The Measure by Nikki Ehrlich. This book is quite hyped. It's been going around. So many people have read it. And I can just honestly tell you that anytime anyone's talked about it, even if it was a really positive experience and they loved it, I have never been drawn to it. The premise didn't sound interesting to me, which is people get like a box on their doorstep and it tells them the day that they die. And I think there's multiple perspectives. But for whatever reason, it's not calling to me. But this brand new person perfect, not even read hardcover was just staring at me in a little free library and I picked it up. Should I read it? You know, if you've read it and loved it, should I read it? Because I'm not convinced that I should. This next one, you should have seen a clip of me find. That is Fire and Blood by George R.R. R. Martin. Look, I'm a big fan of the show, Game of Thrones. My husband and I watch it, we love it, and I've always wanted to read the books. I don't know when that will happen because I believe there's like eight or nine of them and they're very long and the last one's not even done and who knows if it, it will even be done at whatever point. This is a prequel to the entire series. So the reason why I'm like, I should not keep this book is one, I don't own any of the other Game of Thrones series. I have absolutely no idea when I would read them, let alone read the prequel. But this was like, again, brand new, perfect condition, filled with illustrations. It's a cool book for Game of Thrones fans. So that is why I just, again, just couldn't help myself and got my hands on it but realistically i will not read this in the next 10 years at least if not more so i probably shouldn't keep it around this next one solely because of the cover wink poppy midnight doesn't this book look cool there's some hearts and spider webs and moons and snakes and owls and flowers on it like it looks cool but the premise sounds weird and dark and maybe it's like ya two girls one boy one summer one bad thing what really happened someone knows someone is lying sounds like absolutely horrendous 
book. But the cover is cool, so couldn't pass it up. I picked up Shelter and God, Your Refuge in Times of Trouble by Dr. David Jeremiah. I picked this up because I was like, hey, Christian nonfiction, maybe that sounds interesting and I'll read it. But I think this is about when life goes upside down and it is particularly talking about COVID. And I originally picked it up just because of the title, but then I read the back and I'm like, you know, this is not a book that I think I will ever read. Doesn't really fit right for my stage of life or what I'm going through. So I just don't think that this will be the book for me, but it could totally be a resource for someone else. And last but not least, maybe least, I don't think this author is for me. She's loved, she's hyped, she's hated. At this point as a reader, I can quite firmly say that I have zero desire and don't ever plan on reading her. But then I found these two books in perfect condition in multiple little free libraries. There were multiple copies and I was like, hmm, maybe I should take them. I'm talking about Colleen Hoover and it ends with us, it starts with us. I believe this is turning into a movie. These are like so well loved. There's like 200 holds for each of these books at the library. It's preposterous how huge she is. For the most part, I'm falling on the side of like, I really don't have any interest in reading her. Don't think this will be the stuff for me. Usually these are about like toxic, broken relationships and just drama that I don't wanna read about. But I do know that people love these, people read them. It's just why she's so popular. So I was like, if anything, I'm just gonna swap out some books and it would take a lot of convincing for me to read these, I think. You know, I say all this, but watch me read one of these this summer, who knows? So that is my not so little haul. Thank you for joining me on this little free library adventure. I would highly recommend if you ever find yourself going to Port Townsend. It is a cute little town and a book lover's dream to find so many little free libraries that are well-maintained, well taken care of. And it really just felt like a fun treasure hunt. Glad I found some gems and some maybes and some probably nots. And like always, let me know what you think of any of these books or my thoughts or what you think I should read or not. And I'll see you guys in another video soon. Bye.